My name is Julie McElmurray. Recently, I was invited to spend a day at Anna's Place. It is a house of Franciscan hospitality in Chester, Pennsylvania. It's a place where neighbors from that area get together. There's a crochet club, bingo, computer classes, all sorts of ways that the local people come together, get to know each other better, and form community. I got to interview a lot of the people who work there and volunteer there, as well as some of the neighbors who participate in the events there. I hope you enjoy learning a little more about Anna's Place. Everybody called me Gus, so I just let it stay like that. But, but my name is Augustus. In the beginning, we couldn't get nobody to come. The lunch, we used to eat the lunch ourselves. Nobody comes until people start knowing and, you know, they know what the sisters, then they start coming. So now it's quite a lot. And people look forward, you know, to come. So I think it's a blessing for Chester. People drive to come, people walk to come, they get a ride to come, so, you know. I think it's, it's great. <laughs> we got bingo downstairs, uh, free bingo. A lot of people want to know how much you pay, but everything here is free. And uh, people come to them, so, because they really enjoy coming here. I still pick up people for computer class, bring them here, take them back home. And, Truth is very, you know, I think people like it. So it makes you feel good when you see people come in and talk about it. You know, you never hear anything negative about it. And if you go in the street, well, me anyway, if I go in the street, people will say, when is bingo? You still have bingo. You know, you're, so it's, it's, it's a good feeling for Anna's place for Chester anyway. So they do a lot for Chester. I keep wanting to ask someone this. What kind of prizes do they have at bingo? Well, sometimes people, everything we got is donations. So it might be clothes, new clothes. We doesn't give no used clothes for, for bingo prize. Um, we got toys, we got games, uh, whatever people done it. So it's quite a lot of different things. Jewelry, uh, quite a lot of jewelry. So whatever people done it, so put it on the table. So we usually give them three prizes for the early bird and two prizes next. And then sometimes we mess around and say, well, if you bingo now, you get four prizes, six prizes, seven prizes. But once a while, people bingo, not really, you know, at that time, but it's just making the, the thing have a little fun to it. And that's what we hope anyway. After the cheese comes another slice of bread, and the bread is, the buttered side is up so that it's all set to go right into the pan and come out looking golden brown. Was this a recipe that was passed down to you from generations? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but it is my favorite sandwich. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Oh, we've got a picture of this. <laughs> With the butter, but there's no uh, cheese in the middle, so I missed a step. Um, I'm Sister Anne Marie Slavin. I'm a sister of St. Francis of Philadelphia. Our founders is um, Mother Frances Bachman. She was born in Bavaria. Um, her name was Maria Anna Bachman. I like that because it's similar. And um, she married, she was married to Anthony Bachman. They had three children before they came, I believe, to the United States. Her husband was killed. He was doing construction work of some type. And they think it was most likely by the, one of the nativist groups, the know-nothings, um, who were against immigrants. Maria was pregnant with her fourth child at the time of his death. Her sister, Barbara Bowl, moved in with Anna into their home, which they called the Holy Family Home. And 
tried to help her raise the children. What they did was to open their home, Anna's home, to young working women, particularly German immigrant women, who needed a safe place to stay. At one point, they even took the sick into their homes, the people who were too poor to be accepted into a hospital. They actually managed to get together enough money from begging to buy a house, which became one of the first Catholic hospitals in Philadelphia. What is our obligation to the poor as a Franciscan sister? I think probably we have the same obligation to an extent that every human person has. I think all of us have an obligation to one another because we are all children of the same God. And maybe we try to do it a little more in depth. You know, um, I don't work with the poor directly. My ministry is not directly with the poor. But I, I still, I think, work with the poor through communications of what other sisters are doing. Or we work for the poor through advocacy. We, last week, we made 85 sandwiches. And nice and hot. They have a bus that they bring people if they need a ride. So your name is Candy. My name is Candy. Okay. And you're from? I'm from Ridley Park, Pennsylvania, which is right down the road. Okay, I volunteer on Thursdays, you know, when they have the luncheons for the people. And I enjoy, I enjoy meeting the people. I enjoy being here with the other volunteers that, um, you know, that help to make, prepare beforehand and to serve the luncheons and, you know, it's just a nice bunch of people. It really is. The people that come to have lunch, they're basically the same people. You might get new people, new faces, you know, every once in a while, but it, I think it's basically the same people. So, and you look forward to seeing them. Certain people, I think you, you become closer to than, than others, you know, and you have a, have a, a, a little relationship with them, but, you know, um, it's just, it's, it's peaceful here, very peaceful here. So I enjoy that. I go to um, Our Lady of Angels on retreat every year. We've been doing this, my group, for maybe 10 years or longer. And I had, I knew that Sister Jean Rapertus was a part of the Franciscan family. I went to high school with her. Yes, so I, every time I would go out practice, I'd say, now, you know, is Sister Jean here? Is, you know, Jean Rapertus here? And they'd say, no, no, no. But nobody ever explained where she was. So one day, um, when I was out there on retreat, they told us not to go in the chapel because something was going on. But I heard all this music, beautiful music coming from there, and I never was one to listen to what somebody told me not to do. So I thought, well, I'm gonna go in and see what's going on. So I did, and here is this woman standing at the door, and she said, oh, you know, you know um, we're having a, um, a memorial for the people in Chester that have died. I said, oh, we're in Chester, do you work? And she said, Anna's place. I said, we are not Jean Rapertus. <laughs> So that just sort of rekindled everything, and she said, oh, you know, you know, stop on down, we'd love to have you, and blah, 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 and so I did. And we started by, a friend of mine, I started by bringing things down, and then I just started volunteering here. So, and it's been great. It's a happy place. It really is, and I have volunteered at other places, and it's not, a ha it's not as happy. Everybody just, you know, sister's happy, sister Maria's happy, their nuns are all happy, you know, and of course that rubs off on you and you're happy and then the people are happy. So it's great, it's wonderful. 
you know, and I think they all walk away from here with a certain peace and, you know, which I think is what it's all about to give these people, you know, some sort of security, you know, as far as there's a place to go where people care. students and the background of these students are people who never you know interacting with the computer um, and so they're coming in kind of fresh not really knowing what to do um, how do you turn on a computer that type of thing and I was teaching uh, I think use it I was doing like a bar graph or a chart of sort of some sort um, Microsoft Word and um, so we're doing this this graph, and all throughout the time, uh, the class period, um, people are uh, you know they're grumbling or they're they're starting to be some sort of pushback from students because it's it is a challenging thing. But uh, I think through kind of adversity in terms of challenges, there's a lot of growth, and that was really the outcome of the class, at least that particular class. Some students that didn't really get the whole um, kind of uh, class, that particular class, um, had a lot of fun with it and they kind of mentioned that at the, at the end of it, and like, oh yeah, you know what, this is really fun, I had a lot of fun with this, and they were surprised and I was surprised because it was a challenge, but it was, it was a fun challenge for us. I've understood that Those things which do have meaning manifest them, themselves or manifest in a way that come as relationships or come as um, people that I've learned to love and trust. And I think that has really made the difference in my life. And I think the sisters have really been a kind of a beacon of hope um, in being able to help to facilitate that for people like me. Um, and I think for people who are coming from other areas of life, whether um, they're just looking for something to do, um, short term or long term, I take great joy knowing that I have this opportunity. Um, good cheese. <laughs> cheese and butter and great cheese. And love. And lots of love. <laughs> and there's another one there too. Yeah, there's another one. Very gracious. My name is Maxine Graves and it's M A X I N E. Uh, I'm a registered nurse and I belong to a parish that's affiliated with the Hospitality Center. I came here to Anna's place to do one day screening and then I end up saying yes to Sister Jean uh, to do it not just once a month, now I do it once a week and usually I have to have someone fill in for me when I can't do it myself. Um, you can't say no to some nuns, and I'm afraid Sister Jean is one of those nuns you don't say no to because she makes it very convenient for the yes. Um, I look at what they do here, and I don't see many other people doing the same thing. Um, I've actually seen her talk to someone, and before you know it, she's out the door with them in the van, and she's taken them to a place um, where they live and evaluated that place and in so many ways have seen to they leave that place because it's unsafe where they are. 
or she's gotten someone who came here for lunch and who has not been fed, where they pay for getting room and board, which includes a meal, and they're not getting it. Um, and of course, she's went to that place with them as their advocacy person, and eventually that person does get a meal, but it took her intervention for that to happen. And there are not many people who are actually brave enough to do that. I consider that bravery. Um, I'm not so sure I would have the courage, although I have been an advocate as a nurse, to get someone moved out of a place that was infested. Um, but on a political basis, I had the cooperation, of course, of a hospital situation, where a sister just has a good Lord, and the fact that she's Sister G. Today, we had someone who came in uh, who had a funny name. Now, I'm not so sure this is that man's name or not, but it made us both laugh. And that part in itself, uh, the laughter brings some joy and also some giving from somebody else. And for me, the giving, that's my blessing. I don't have to get it from anybody else. I don't have to give it to myself. It's a given. In the last Oh, three and a half to four years, there have been at least five people who had um, a blood pressure screening done, and they were in trouble. They were at the point where uh, I was afraid for them. Their blood pressure were in the 300 range. Now their blood pressures are relatively controlled. They have progressed to the point where I'm not as afraid for them, and they're not as afraid for themselves because they'll tell sister, I can't eat that. That has too much salt in it. Or I had my processed meat for the week and I can't have any more. And my success is not really mine. I think it's a matter of they trust me and that has to be something that's uh, done over time. It doesn't happen in one day. I'm not that good. So. And I guess that's why I keep coming back. I used to be part of this neighborhood because at the time I lived on this end of the town and I went to this particular church back when this was a school. Um, I think it's a matter of just trusting that you're going to be safe. And also that you're humble enough to know that you're no better or greater than the person that you serve. Soup. With everything in the world in it. I am Maria Orlandini, O-R-L-A-N-D-I-N-I. I'm a sister of St. Francis of Philadelphia, and I am the uh, program coordinator here at uh, Anna's Place in uh, Chester, Pennsylvania. We call it uh, Franciscan hospitality, and that's what we try to. That's what we try to do, really, mostly. We started with uh, four or five people with four old computers, uh, and um, the, the idea was and is to create community among people, especially in this area of Chester. So from just interacting with people, we were two of us at that time. Um, and we just try to teach computer <laughs> to be one step ahead of them because I never studied computer, so I just learned by myself. We decided that we wanted to enlarge our clientele and make ourselves known to a larger group. So we, you know, there is, the movie says, uh, build and they will come, you know, so say, have food and they will come. <laughs> yeah. And so we started, uh, I remember serving lunch, you know, just with a pot of soup uh, downstairs and uh, opening, you know, it took some time for people to to get to know that we were open and, you know, took a few months. And, um, but then finally, you know, they, they understood who we were and they started to become comfortable with us. So they, now we are serving a meal every Thursday, you know, downstairs. 
I think so far we must have touched 150 people through the computer. And I think what attracts the people for the computer, although some of them really want to know the computer, but it's not really the computer, is the um, coming together with others, having a common thing to, to want to learn, that especially nowadays is, uh, is important that the grandchildren and you know their relatives know that they at least know how to touch a computer. And um, so it has become a community building, really. And so since one of my interests is uh, social justice, so I, you know, I integrate in what we teach um, issues that are issues of the day, you know, from climate change to immigration to Women's Day to uh, Black History Month. You know, we try to, to um, learn, teach them how to search through the computer, how to educate themselves on, on special issues and how important it is for them to take part and become advocate. And for me, I mean, for me it's... Uh, yeah, it's rewarding. I, I would say it's uh, you know not earth shaking. It's not a big you know enterprise and whatever. But in the smallness of the of the place, I think we are touching people's lives. I think we are educating people. I think we are um, creating a safe place, especially in a town that is so uh, hurting uh, with violence and drugs and, and unemployment and people in prison and all that stuff that it goes on around us. Um, I mean, Anna's place has become a place of uh, safety, place of security, place of hospitality, place of uh, um, where they know that they can be respected. As Christians, we need to mingle. That's what Pope Francis says all the time. Go to the periphery, go to the, the people, you know, mingle with the people until you remain in your office and until you remain in your house protected and uh, whatever you, how are we going to mingle? It's a cold just gonna be for my mom. She can something there when she sits in a chair, she can pull it all the way up. I have a scarf that she made me. Oh, I made it there Christmas. for Christmas. Mm. Yeah, her, this is a scarf. And would you make it another scarf, right? Uh uh, this is a uh, throw blanket. To oh, it's a throw across blanket. my couch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Oh, that's somebody making something nice. Here. Yeah, I think it's the according to how the, how the thickness, see, them, it's not thick. And some of these are. She ain't got no more than yellow. Oh, here, little yellow. Well, I got that one. I just go on the computer and crochet. <laughs> I don't think I do. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the computer class, what that's involved with? Well, we, um, it's more likely, you know, it helps you, like, especially if you don't know, you know, a lot of things about the internet and computers. They cheat you from scratch, even if you don't know how to type. They start you from scratch, and, you know, you work your way up. And that's good, because, see, some people, they know how to, you know, spend a while since they've been to school, and you might need a refresher course. So it's good, because they work one-on-one -on -one with you, you know, you're not in, in a hurry, because somebody else is more advanced, so you don't have to hurry up. Get, try to, you know, be on their level. You work on your own level. And they take your time. That's the part I like. Because I was, right. I went to you school before for it, but as you get older, you lose a lot of things. And then with the internet, it changes a lot. See, I like it. I like it here. Now push the third button. Plus it's something, you know, that they're actually helping the community. Mm -hmm. How did they get started? Like, how did they know... You know, when they were deciding what to do with this building, how did they decide to make it? I think a... they were just asking people, you know, what things they would like, what certain things they would, would they like to do. And, you know, you know if they guess like the crochet and, you know, if like, you people wanted to join, then that was something that they were looking into. Because she asked us about the crochet at first, you know, did any of us like to do that? And would we come? <laughs> so I guess, you know, you word of mouth. Asked around. You turn the button off. I don't know how you can talk and do that. I would be. I would have such a mess. Oh, I watch TV and do this. <laughs> and see, I, I was, I say, not that good. But see, I love my big old sister here. She been doing it for years. 
Um, but this is something that it's it's now the, concentration the to me. It's calming. You something to do. Plus, it keeps you at the house <laughs> well, for at least an hour. <laughs> I don't know nothing about the bingo and all that other stuff, but I don't have time for all that. Well, you do have time for that. You could, oh. you should at least try it. What, the bingo? Yeah, it's free. The prizes are free. You what, know what the word bingo. Right, but you push me. You're like, it goes B1, B2. I'm getting my Hank to stay home and watch Mommy every day ain't, ain't free. <laughs> but this is only on a Tuesday. <laughs> From 1 to one to. Uh, I don't want to hear that only on no Tuesday and then I'm leaving on a Wednesday and then I'm leaving on a Thursday. Well, you, <laughs> you find something for him to do. Mm, yeah, babysit mommy. <laughs> That's what he's doing now. <laughs> he's wrong. He's wrong. <laughs> Since I am a senior citizen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am exactly 73 years old. Go ahead, Mr. I thought when people were 73, they looked older. No, no, no. I'm not going back in the ancient days. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up with some of the modern stuff. The kids, they okay. But let me tell you one thing. They on their own. I can help you to a certain extent, but you're going to leave me alone. That's how I feel. Bringing the past to the future is hard. Very hard. Well, I'm going to leave my past where it's at and see if I can hang in the future. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> what, hang in the future? You in the future now, I'm in Jay. Yeah, you could. Uh, 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 there's your grandma. Grandma what? <laughs> where you come from? <laughs> it's hard. You cool grandma, huh? You the cool grandma. <laughs> yeah. hmm. There's a shrine there. This is, uh, we built this for the van and the fundraiser. That's the garden. That's the garden shed, a mini shed. And some man, I was giving a talk and afterwards, I was talking about the garden. I said, and we're trying to get a shed. And he bought it, <laughs> just like that, just like that. That's what people do, it's amazing and um, Commodore Barry Bridge. You're just a block from the Delaware River. People live there. There's just a, a little street that separates them from the Delaware River and their house. But because of all the factory, because they have a trash incinerator that takes trash from all over the country, as far north and south, it's the biggest trash incinerator in the country, in this little town, city of Chester, and all these chemicals come out of it. And so people down there, like if they planted a garden, there would be stuff all over their flowers. They have to keep their windows closed because of stuff. The children have a high degree of cancer and respiratory problems, and they donate, uh, um, let's say, $5,000 a year they, that company will donate to Crozier Hospital for people who are cancer, have cancer, and they think that's the big solution, you know. And yet we went to City Hall, and I'll tell you, these people, these people were amazing. They spoke clearly, they spoke loudly, they spoke firmly, they spoke intellectually about all of the dangers and we had a, a company that advocates and they brought all the facts and in the end they voted to increase it yeah it's it's pathetic so anyway that's our little town of chester <laughs> you got it <laughs> We just got conned into this last night. <laughs>